So, this is probably the creepiest and the most unsettling book that I've read, like, ever in my life, and I never ever want to read something like that again. But again, it is a book, and my channel name happens to be Book Questers, so yeah. Hello fellow Book Questers, it is I, Aaron the Book Quester, and today I am here in this dark room with this book, Robert Colmeyer's The Rag and Bone Shop, and well, let's get right on to it. So, Jason is a 12 year old, and he is suspected of killing a young girl, due to the fact, due to some circumstantial evidence that Jason does not have a strong alibi on the fact that he wasn't there where the girl died. And he was the only one who had any sort of even weak motive, or so it seemed. So Trent, who is very very good at pulling the truth or forcing the truth out of people, is on the job, and he goes for a confession. And he drives Jason, the young 12 year old, to the edge of his mental capacity, and he toys with the boy. And finally, he forces a confession of a crime that Jason did not even do. And he's done. However, we find out the truth. The girl's brother was the one who murdered the little girl. <clears throat> In fact, so it wasn't Jason. And Trent's courier was over. But a lot, that wasn't the end. Due to the endless mental attacks that Trent had performed on the young 12 year old, our good old main character Jason is driven to insanity. He feels as if he failed Trent. He failed to be the killer, the murderer. So he goes after Bobo, and the book ends with him picking up. The kitchen knife. And after that, I was like, what in the world is going on? Jeez, what the? No, I'm never reading that again. Please put that book away somewhere that I can never ever see it again. Yep, and I also read it in Korea. Hence why I don't know the name of Trent's job, but, you know, technicalities, right? And that's how the book ends. Now, that's my point of view as a reader, but as an amateur writer, well, things is a little different. So for that ending where... Where, you know, Jason goes to the kitchen knife and, like, picks it up creepily and goes like this. Um, it's either I would have tuned it down or made it extreme. And in this case, if I was this author, I would have made this extreme. Because this, what this author is trying to show is this clearly the dangers of mental attacks and how it can perhaps in some ways be even more harmful than physical abuse or attacks. And if he's trying to show that point... I think a suicide would also have worked. Um, maybe perhaps Jason killing himself at the end or something like that. I do understand the taking of a life, that impact is needed at the end. However, I didn't think it was necessary for Jason to go for Bobo, personal opinion. Of course, it could have been even more extreme. For example, it could have been like, um, Jason stood over Bobo's body. He held a knife that was drenched in crimson blood. And Bobo lay on the ground lifeless. What have I done? said Jason. Or something like that, you know? Like something and then and then Jason takes his own life, like, what have I done? What have I become? And then goes and then you know book ends, uh, blah blah blah. But I don't know, maybe the author was going for the more unexpected. But I think that perhaps the suicide plus the, you know, Jason kills young, uh, young Bobo, another side character, and then he kills himself. Maybe that would have worked as well. You know, just seeing other possible endings to the book. Or it could have not ended with the death at all. In fact, there's a really good line that Trent says, and I'm just going to direct translate it from Korean because I read it in Korean, unfortunately. Um, basically, Trent says, I everything I had left into doing this job but now I don't even have this job or something like that I'm sure if in, in the actual English version it's way it's a way better line it's a way more impactful line but anyways you get the point if he ended on that line that also might have showed the devastating consequences of 
the mental attacks. I mean, the mental attacks doing harmful stuff to the little kid, to the twelve-year-old minor, mind you. Now that's kind of obvious, isn't it? So maybe showing how the person who actually did these mental attacks could completely be destroyed, as in, you know, his career. So that might also have been a very good ending. As a writer, that's what I see. So all in all, I think what the author was going for is basically to make us all go like, "What in the actual heck?" at the end of the book, and basically make us really creeped out and really shocked. About what mental attacks can do and how they are so powerful, so impactful, especially to a twelve-year-old kid. What in the world? In fact, I, when I was reading the book, I was like, "Oh my God, kid! Call a lawyer right now! It is against the law. Call the lawyer." And yeah, you know, he's a minor. What going like mental attacks on a minor and forcing him a confession? Trent, that's not preserving your career as he thinks. It's just. Just craziness, and then of course there's a little bit of the controversy. Who gets the punishment for Bobo's death afterwards? After all, it was Trent who made Jason insane, but Jason is the actual one who will, or perhaps would, deliver the blow while after the buck. So what do we think? Is it Jason's fault, or is it Trent's fault? Is mental attacks as harmful as physical attacks? Is it worse? Is it less harmful? What do you think? By the way, I'm never ever reading that book ever again. Just saying. I mean, it's a great book. It was impactful. It was intense. I ripped through it, or so I say. But all in all, that is a book that will give me nightmares, and I'm throwing it out the window. And like always, your book cluster and the book cluster. It is a great book, as I've said. But I wouldn't recommend it to people who has a very weak heart, cause, cause affirmation reasons, whatever. Have a great day.